Okay, so today we're going to be looking at this, Star Wars Rebellion. It's produced by Fantasy Flight Games, and it's a two-player, essentially, uh, epic conflict between the Galactic Empire and the Rebel Alliance, as it states on the box. And it really is that. It's Star Wars in a box. One player is going to be taking on the Rebel Alliance, the other one the Empire. And they've really captured the feel of both sides. So if you're the rebel player, you're going to be doing objectives. You're going to be doing hit and runs, a lot of real quick thematic to the original trilogy films uh, kind of objectives. So you might be blowing up the Death Star. You might be uh, getting sympathizers from destroyed galaxies, uh, uh, sorry, destroyed planets from the from the Death Star. Uh, you might be trying to seed in loyalty or, or just trying to build up the rebels uh, hold on some of the systems uh, and taking that away from the Galactic Empire. The Empire player is going to be building and building and building and amassing huge armies, really powerful armies and, and fleets that are going to go on search to try and find the hidden rebel base, which is the ultimate objective for the Empire to win the game. The rebel player needs to just hold out. If they can wait a certain amount of time, then they win the game. Now, the, the mechanics in the game are absolutely brilliant. You have leaders, little standees. They will go over to do different objectives, uh, different missions, they call it, not objectives, different missions, and they'll go to different systems, and then you'll have some that you'll use to move the fleet to different systems to try and ultimately try and find that hidden rebel base. Uh, and the solo rules, which I'm going to be playing through today, uh, they are brilliant because they really capture, they use the same rule set, it really captures the same feel of the game, which was my biggest uh, concern, trying to do it solo, uh, thinking it wouldn't capture that same uh, stories that you would normally get from playing through the game. It's a long game, it's like three or four hours, really, technically, um, I think every time I played through it, it's been three or four hours, um, and a solo version will be no different. But... That's a positive for me, because because you're so invested in that game, all the story you got you got capturing rebel leaders. You've got things you can do to those captured rebel leaders. Uh, you can freeze them in carbonite. You can interrogate them. You can turn them to the dark side and actually have them as your character for the rest of the game. Awesome. You've got Luke who starts off as uh, Tatooine Luke, and then you you've got one card. Which is it's like it's like their um their their personal mission card I guess you can call it, um, which is, is awesome because you go and find um Yoda in Dagobah basically to train. If you do that, then you become Jedi Luke, which is like in the uh, episode six, um, and uh, and Yoda's with you to give you a, like a reroll effectively. Then. If you're really lucky, you can draw another character ability card, which um, is like one in a million, which mimics the idea of blowing up a Death Star. Uh, and it's just it's so good. But obviously this can change. This doesn't have to be those characters. So you may not have Han Solo, who gets frozen in Carbonite. Princess Leia may get captured and put into Carbonite. Princess Leia might get captured and then lured to the dark side and actually turned to the dark side. So all these and all these stories, which are all very much thematic and based on the original trilogy, Star Wars films, you will go through, but in slightly different ways. You could have two Death Stars flying around uh, as, as the Empire player. You might build Super Star Destroyers and have a couple of them as well uh, to really build up your projects. Uh, you might be more about Boba Fett and going capturing leaders. Um, so you can send Vader and you can send uh, Boba Fett to go and capture loads of leaders. Uh, all of it's in there. And then it's got um, tactic cards. It's dice rolling in terms of trying to uh, accomplish missions and in battles. So it's, it's got dice rolling in there as well. Um, really, really nice game. It, it was so well designed and it, I just love it. It you know, it doesn't get to the table loads because of how long it takes and the fact it's only two player. But if that's something that you would feel you fit to and you like Star Wars and you like board games, it, it's a it's a no brainer. It's a must. And you can pick them up. I mean, there's so many of them in stock pretty much around around the world, effectively, that you, you can pick them up 
relatively cheaply uh, a copy and uh, it's brilliant. It's got little miniatures, so if you like painting, they're, they're nice miniatures to paint. Uh, there's a lot of them, so uh, I haven't. You'll notice when we come down to the board that I haven't managed to paint all of mine, um, but it is certainly an option to do, and I think I think that's quite nice. Um, and it and it uses mission cards, so you kind of you kind of assigning these missions, and they can be different because there's a whole mission deck. So you've got a bit of replayability in there as well, and obviously it depends on what comes out when. So your your, your playthroughs are going to be different, and they really have been. Uh, they've been their own individual Star Wars story every time I've played this with different people and then you've got that connection to that other player and it's rare to have games that that have that strength uh, and it really does have that so when I saw that there was a solo version I, I was concerned because I was thinking how can they get that real that same vibe that, those same stories but I gotta hand it to it, it, it it's brilliant it, it really does have that feel and it, it it was fantastic. I loved playing through solo. Um, so I've done it a few times. So we're going to be playing, I'm going to be playing through uh, a whole solo game. So we're looking at maybe three or four hours. Uh, I'll have to look at the timestamps. Have a look at the timestamps below. I'm going to split the videos into parts as well um, because it's just going to be way too big otherwise. Um, so maybe three or four parts uh, to go through the whole game of Rebellion. But, I mean, it's uh, an essential part of my collection. I do like Star Wars, and I like board games, and I also like miniature games. Uh, so it kind of ticks a lot of boxes for me. Um, but if you like quite a heavy game, um, and, you, and as I say, you like Star Wars, it's, it's, it's a must. It really is. Okay, so let's get down to the table, and we'll play Star Wars Rebellion Solo. Okay, and welcome to Rebellion, Star Wars Rebellion Solo. We're doing the solo version, which was created by Dale Boonacore. Maybe I said that wrong. And uh, effectively uses an AI system to take control of the Empire player. Now, I'm going to try and keep it a little bit more uh, steady in the camera this time. Uh, just because of the sheer size of this game, I won't be able to do a, a fixed camera uh, with my phone. Uh, as you can see, the game takes up a fair amount of space. But if you want Star Wars in a box, creating your own story, this is such an amazing game. Uh, now, uh, a little bit first of all, I've painted some of the uh, of the miniatures in this game. You can probably see over here uh, some of those the Rebel Troopers aren't painted, but certainly the ships are. Um, they're just such great detail. Um, for how little they are. So I've got me um, my X-Wings there, for example. And um, Corvill Cor Corvette over there as well. Uh, but lovely little miniatures, and it just brings that epic scale to the game. So, I've set it up. It takes a while to set up, I've got to be honest. Um, yeah, it's taken a fair amount just to... I haven't played the solo version for a fair while, uh, so getting back to understanding the rules again uh, took a while. So, these are the phases. It's the usual kind of a phases uh, that you have the assignment phase, the command phase, and then the refresh phase. Uh, and this is just when you do battles, what you do with the AI. And um, it's, it's very similar. Uh, it does change as the turns go on. You use the same setup, you take away one of the level two objectives, and you just change the project cards. You get one of each project cards, shuffle it into the main deck. This is the starting deck uh, that will change, of course, as uh, as time goes on, as we start, as it says here, when they draw specific missions from the table. So one starting and one main mission. And then they're gonna go through all those. Okay, so the first round, the first thing we do is we do the, the, uh, the assignment phase. So I've drawn, as it says in turn one and two, you do one starting mission, one main mission. So I take in, I've made an initial missions deck from one of these and one of these, okay? Shuffled it up and it's ready to go. Next, um, you play, the Empire plays all action cards are playable in the assignment phase. So, uh, we should do this uh, properly in order. So I need to do my assignments if I wish to. 
Um, uh, objective cards are always worth having, but do I get it now or wait until I get a bit... I'm going to wait until I get a little bit more uh, stronger. So, uh, first of all, we're going to do Tarkin. He's going to go between the two, two most powerful building um, s Imperial systems that there are. Uh, don't worry about this. Uh, this, this. This card doesn't worry about that. So, we roll a dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it goes in the first one here, which is space. So that's a Star Destroyer and a TIE Fighter. So bear with me in. Okay. So you can see over there, we've got the TIE Fighter. Right. Uh, we Sorry, we had to actually place him into that area as well. Right. That's the first one. Uh, we got another assignment. Uh, Boba Fett's, by the way, this is the fifth player uh, that the solo version gives them. Okay. So I think it's fair to say that we're just going to do uh, a random, a completely random. There's six um, Imperial systems. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Sullust. So Boba Fett is going over to Sullust. I cannot attempt any missions in Sullust. Ah, oh, that's, that's annoying. <laughs> Because that's where I would like to sabotage um, being one of their strongest. Maybe I go to Mustafar instead. Oh, well, we'll see. Okay, so that's uh, their assignment done. Uh, next, we move on to the command phase. Right, so following the normal rules, we are going to assign, we need to assign all of our guys first. They're basically just going to draw straight off the top of this deck. So uh, definitely build an alliance. I've got a neutral area where I've got units. So that's that's a no-brainer. Let's send Mon Mothma, who's the best at doing that. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, I do want to sabotage. Uh, so it leaves me Leia and Jan Dodonna. I think uh, infiltration is just a staple, especially in the early game. Just need to get through those uh, weaker objectives. And then we move on. So I'm not planning on moving my fleet, or am I? I'm I'm a little bit tempted to. I mean, my base is Dantooine. That's where the hidden base is. It's got to be on one of these remote planets, as you know. So I've selected Dantooine. So I'm all the way over there, trying to keep as far away from these guys as possible. Uh, they are going to start to draw probe cards as as per the normal game. So gonna, they may be narrowing down where they're going to be heading. And they, they are quite aggressive, okay, uh, in this game. The, the Imper Imperial side is really quite aggressive in terms of trying to search for that base. So I think we're going to do Mon Mothma's first, which is build an alliance. Now, because there's already a uh, rebel unit there, I get two dice. But how does the AI work for this? So... If uh, they, if we're doing opposing rebel missions and joining a battle, only if there are more rebel leaders than unrevealed initial mission cards, which there is, we roll a d6. On a four plus, they send their best possible qualified leader to oppose me. So four plus, and they send the emperor to oppose me. And it is a four. So the emperor is coming over, quite thematic. He doesn't like the idea of rebel scum trying to take over the uh, the galaxy. So, it's three against three, except for, uh, our red dice will be rebels, black will be uh, uh, the empire, except for because of the two additional dice, because I've got rebel units. Uh, of course, I only get two. <laughs> wow. And he gets three and opposes me. Great, uh, great start. Uh, never mind. Okay, his go. It says they will always complete initial missions first. So the way this works is you flip over the top card of the initial track. Homing beacon. Right, okay, this is a classic. There's no captured leader, so we can't do that. So it says, unplayable, select a new mission from the appropriate deck and place all unfulfilled missions at the bottom of their respective decks. So this is a normal mission card. 
So we put that at the bottom of the mission deck and we draw a new one and resolve this one. This will work. Trade negotiations, we're looking for yellow. So Darth Vader, oh, thank God Darth Vader's going away, leaving General Tag behind. Yes. Any populous system. If successful, gain one loyalty in this system. It's basically going to go for the the best build quality. They call it um, production value in this game. So we're going to look to see what's the best production value out there. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be Utapal out over on there. Uh, that's got a circle and a square. So I'm pretty sure that's the strongest one on the board. So it's basically going to attempt... Darth Vader's going to attempt over there. I've got no leaders to oppose him. So he does that unopposed and it gains one loyalty in that system. That card is discarded. Over there. It's such a big board to put my arms around. Okay, so that was their go. So now we move on to my go. Let's, let's try, let's not, mm, he still can oppose me. So I, I, he's only got one guy left who's literally good. No, he won't oppose me. He will not oppose me because he only has one against one. So I'm gonna go and do this next. So we're gonna go and sabotage and we're gonna go and sabotage, definitely. Oh, now that he's done Utapai, except for, I'm not gonna go against Darth Vader, obviously. So unopposed, he's not gonna send him because he's got um, one, uh, the, he has a mission he has to complete, which is cool. That's always, sabotaging is always good. Right, so. He can't do it. So that was a starting card. So we put that onto the bottom of the deck until we either do a fist or a computer symbol. No. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, right. So he's gonna try and uh, in a rebel leader that is in a system that contains an imperial unit. I think. Those two are the only two available there. So at least I've got, yes. So it's got to be here. It's 1v2. So I do have the odds. Red is rebel. Black is, is uh, empire. Yep, we're fine. Two against one. Oh, that was lucky. Two against one. So uh, we, we thwart their attempt to... Obviously, starting cards could go back to the starting deck, and, and I'll uh, shuffle that up in a second. Cool, right? Uh, that's his. Uh, that's his go. Uh, so all we got left to do these are starting cards. So I put these back in my hand. Is uh, attempt in any system that contains an imperial unit. Ah, forgot about that. Uh, let's go. It doesn't really matter in this case. I'm just going to go up to Salakumi, and I'm successful. Top two. One on top, one on bottom. So we've got cut supply lines or regional support. That's gonna go at the top. That's gonna go at the bottom. Not too long. So this is this kind of situation now. We've now done all of our turns. So retrieve leaders is the first thing. Draw mission cards is the next one. So I'm just going through the, uh, the normal way. Uh, so we've got four, five, six, seven, eight now. Uh, Wookies and misdirection. Oh, misdirection is quite cool. Um, and then they don't worry about them. They don't draw that stuff. Next, <clears throat> excuse me. Launch probe droids. We've done. Draw objective card. Sorry, I'm just. This board is so big, which we know is this one. Advanced time marker. So we move this up to two. So we're gonna recruit and build in this action. Uh, and now we recruit and then we build and then we deploy. Okay, so as it says here, building and deploying. So recruitment randomly uh, draws one action card, randomly choosing if there are available leaders. So let's see what they get first of all. Moff Jajarad is, is up. And his card 
goes there. There's another, ooh. Oh, of course he's the Death Star dude, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've done that one. Uh, now, we draw a recruit. So we get two cards. Choose one of them. So it's Luke or Chewie. Now, I pretty much always go for Luke. Luke's so good. Um, especially with son of, son of Skywalker. Okay, recruit done. I've got Luke with uh, son of Skywalker. And they've got Jared with uh, Furry Operation. Okay. Next, we go to building. So, let's start with the Rebels. So, I'm going to be placing this down here to do all of this. I'm gonna place this so you can see the, at least the uh, the builds going ahead, okay? So, I as I said, I need a troop transport. So I'm definitely gonna grab one of those for my base and one of the uh, troopers. Then Mon Calamari, which is really cool, gives me a, uh, one Calamari Cruiser and another choice. Let's uh, let's get another X-Wing, I think. So hopefully you can start to see those getting built up. Uh, so that's Mon Calamari. Uh, Naboo gives me one of each. So let's grab another trooper. And this is going to be on did I say no, boo, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be a one. Uh, let's get a a white wing to go with that. Uh, next, we move on to uh, last one, which is Ryloth, which just gives me a trooper. And that, unfortunately, because I didn't manage to get Mandalore, that is it for the rebels, Imperials, Salakumi. Gets him a ATST uh, in number one. Uh, then we come over to Coruscant, which is literally just a trooper. Uh, Corellia is just a TIE fighter because it's sub it's uh, subjugated, not loyal. Sorry, in Corellia, that TIE fighter is number three, not number one. I thought something was wrong. Then um, a a trooper and an Atat in number two from Sullust. Rodia gives them another Stormtrooper in one. Excellent. And because I sabotage Mustafar, they do not build for Mustafar. So I believe that is it. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Oh no, uh, a Nutapai. Nearly forgot about. That was a bad choice, wasn't it? So yeah, another uh, Star Destroyer and TIE Fighter. No, not a TIE Fighter, and uh, Assault Carrier. Now another Assault Carrier one. into three. So uh, as you can see, just what this game does so well is has it so you feel the pressure of the Empire, this, this massive industrial machine that's churning out so many Imperial units to destroy the rebels. Excellent. So, we move from that that's, to deploy. So start with the rebels, you slide down the queue and then place any limit to two per system. So we've got these to go next, them to go down. Right. Now, this, funny enough, is going into my rebel base, without a doubt. 